Do you have a favorite uh, poker moment or, or any great stories of people you've been around and people you've met? Some of literally the closest friends in my life I met playing poker. Michael Phelps, right? 2006, he was li- went to University of Michigan. I'm, li- I'm in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. You're listening to Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I'm your host, Will Meldman, with my beautiful co-host, Brock O'Hearn. Oh, shit, I'm beautiful now. Yeah, I'll give you that. (laughs) Um, And we are here with a special guest today, Jeff Gross. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This is a pleasure. And I got to just give you guys a compliment off the back. Myself, who has a podcast, like I said, it's been three years. I remember talking at the beginning to you guys. You were talking about doing it. We were, you know, a little chat. And it's just, it's so hard to start. So congrats. I guess 60 plus (laughs) episodes already. And it's amazing to see you guys really like, just not talk about it and do it. So very cool. Thank you for having me and, and congrats. No, I appreciate that a ton. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Obviously we took notes from you, man. Like you, you're the you're the champ in that. So, and we saw you streaming early on too and now to have a podcast and you said you had 180 episodes? Yeah, about 180. So <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Just, but it's fun. It, like, again, it's like journal entry to me. It's just a way of, you have cool relationships, cool people, you get to do it. Again, yeah. if you do it, if you love it, it doesn't, you know, whether it turns in, can't all yeah. be Joe Rogan or have this whatever. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like it's just you do it, you love it, and whatever happens, happens. So exactly, yeah, very cool. Yeah, but we're coming for you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, man. No, um, yeah, that's one of the most fun things about it too is the people you get to talk with, man. The conversations you have, and and you speak with friends or family or whoever it is that maybe you've never even met, and you learn so much about someone. And yeah. Like people that I've been friends with for years, and we're sitting here. Same thing with with Will and people he's introduced me to as, as well. You know, you learn stuff or or dive into their mindset a little bit, and you're like. This is pretty dang cool. For sure. And you don't have to listen to 500 podcasts. Get it. We get it every single time we talk to somebody. It's awesome. Yeah. Very man. cool. Yeah. I mean, we've known each other forever as well, spending a lot of time at Discovery Properties and, um, and other places. And like, I'm excited to learn more about your podcast and, and learn from that as like a concrete example for this episode, you know? Yeah. So obviously you have a little background in poker, huh? Yeah, a couple. Yeah. Been doing it for a bit, about twenty years. You mentioned something one time uh, how this film Rounders was a big inspiration for you. Mm-hmm. I still remember. I think four or five years ago you mentioned that to me. You've seen it now, right? I hope. Oh, I saw it then. Okay, right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about that film? Tell, what was it about that for you? Man, so you know, I, when I started, it was like two thousand three. I was in high school playing soccer, and someone brought a poker chip set to like a plastic chip set to. We were at a team camp, and I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And it was there, University of Michigan. So two thousand three, it was like a sophomore in high school. One of my good friends who was on the team brought a chip set. We started playing, and this was like right when the World Series of Poker was just starting to get on TV. Chris Moneymaker won. Right, this was a big yeah, deal. So yeah. his name's Moneymaker. It almost seems, you know, scripted, glitch in the matrix. He's yeah. amateur, yeah. beats a pro, and I'm, you know, 15, 14 years old in in high school, and then just had just started already playing, and I kind of had a knack. I always loved video games, board games, and then it was like you could actually win money. I was like, this is pretty cool. You know, this is like, you know, it's a. Uh, I was like, let's do it. And then I saw the movie Rounders, and that just kind of something about it. Just like I was like, man, this is so cool. I loved it. It was just kind of all that right at the same time that that kind of got me into it. It would go from a Zelda 64 to poker online being like, this, yeah. is, this actually works. No, there's this. actually a Sprite commercial from way back in the day. I don't know if you remember, but it was like under, they were like the guys playing video games and then this, this little cartoon characters on the side and he like twists off his cap and you know, these guys are going nuts playing video games and like, like oh, and then the guy's like, what'd you win? You know, cause he like want to twist off under the cap. He won a prize and like, there, there's nothing to win. So that, that was kind of like resonating with me. It was like, if I'm going to play, do something, I, I want to have something to kind of aim at achieve. And it, it just kind of, kind of went from there. That's One awesome. of my favorite books anyone's ever given me was uh, Napoleon Hill, Laws of Success. And you gave that to me when I was about, I think like 25, I want to say, making a lot of awesome life changes to become, you know, more like focused on work yep. and how I'm going to build my career and all this stuff. And it was such a great moment for that. And, um, I, I bring it up a lot because I love the way they kind of compare uh, successful people in that. And it's like Jesse James to Henry Ford. Yeah. And it's like two people very successful at what they did, but for different reasons, mm-hmm. right? When did you find that book? So my wife, uh, who I met at Burning Man, so we we have a second kid on the way. And it's Congrats. just kind of, thank you. Mm-hmm. Very crazy. She's very, to me, inspirational, motivational, and gives me some very cool things to make me be better. And this was something that she actually, early on, we started dating, it was like 2015, and she just like gave it to me. I listened to it on tape and then got the book, but I don't know, just like a way of thinking it, it sort of shifted my mind to 
on, you know, there, there is a difference and you create your own luck. I really believe in that. You know, luck is when preparation meets opportunity and mm-hmm. just kind of realizing like, that's one of my favorite quotes. I just, I love that. And I, I think that, um, you know, yeah, you create your own luck. The harder you work, the more luck you'll have. That's how I believe. And um, obviously there's luck in poker, but a lot of skill too. And uh, yeah, I just, I found that book and I just wanted people, I could tell, I remember actually when we spoke, you were sort of at a transitional period. I think you were working on a Ray Donovan yep. show at this time and you're kind of like figuring out what you want to do. And yeah, I just thought about you and then, and brought that. And I, I do remember that, but I, I love that book and I got it. It's Valentine's day. Happy Valentine's day yeah, yeah, Late, yeah. later in the day, day. be with my wife. But yeah, uh, credit to her for finding that. Yeah, no, that that's a great one. We, uh, there's a bunch of, it's crazy how like a good book at a good point in your life can really just like change your shift, your consciousness. And like, Einstein always said like no change can happen without a true like shift in consciousness. Um, and a good book can do that for sure. And I want to ask you guys about Studio 22 because I actually don't know the meaning behind it. And also, could you just tell me when it actually, when did you decide you wanted to do a podcast and what is Studio 22? Yeah, yeah. And we, we yeah. usually don't get questions the other way. I can't help it. So. Yeah. I've had that every single time I've gone on a podcast that isn't ours is every time I'm like trying to do ask questions and I'm like, I'm like, damn, I got to like, it's supposed to be about me. I think this time, you know, but, yes. Last one. Sorry, yeah, yeah. But. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh February 2nd, 2022 of when we had the initial idea. And I believe we might've filmed uh, the 22nd of, of, of that. And it was kind of a working title for us originally. And we, we wanted to talk about, uh, there's more things than just a singular focus that we had. We wanted to cover sports, entertainment, and business, and we, we want to dive into our networks a little bit more. So we wanted to do something that wasn't so niche. Uh, and studio kind of encompass one, you know, what we're what we love, which is yep. you know, film, TV, and big studios and stuff like that. And uh, I think Jim Nance said it best when we had him on. He's like, "Oh, you guys played the numbers game." Yeah. So that's Numerology. exactly what it was for okay. us. Yeah. Because yeah, cool. we had like incredible days, like. February 2nd and February 22nd of 22. So we were definitely playing the numbers because like awesome, amazing things that we'd been working towards for a long time yeah. kind of manifested on those days. And like Brock said, we kind of thought of it on that day too. So very cool. we're doing the numbers. Baby. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And the term studio, very broad and, you know, all encompassing too. Yeah. It was a, it. a working title that we ended up sticking with. Yeah. Very cool. But, but it's, it's been a journey. Yeah, it has been. It has been. Um, what about what about flow? Okay, yeah. So flow. Us, this yeah. this is a poker flow show. I, I remember coming up with the idea. Twenty fifteen um, was. I saw there's a someone again. I know you guys aren't deep into poker, but this there was a guy named Jason Somerville. He was sort of the original guy on Twitch, and I saw him and then a few other people doing it. And I was like, I love people. I love talking. Obviously, I can't even help asking you guys <laughs> questions on the podcast. But I just was like, you know what? Same kind of principle of video games, right? If you're playing video games and you you just like you're playing, it's great. Like we learn some skills, there's games, but mm. to have something to make something of like what you're doing. So I was like, look, I love playing poker. I was playing a lot of poker, playing online poker. And I was like, well, if I can sort of make a, a business out of it or, or have like, have something on the side that I could make some extra side income and do something I love and connect with people. I just, it was like, right place, right time. And I was pretty early on. I mean, I wasn't the first, but I was within poker, one of the earlier people, because it was, you know, Twitch wasn't made for poker. It's for yeah. gaming, but now obviously there's IRL and all kinds of stuff, but that was one of the categories they brought in. And then I, I just like thought of this name. I was like, I love rhymes and stuff. And I just like, like flow show, poker, poker flow show, kind of came up with a character and got lucky for to meet this guy, Vajran out of Croatia, who had designed like 200 Twitch um he had designed like all these different overlays and started working with him and then Bill Perkins who wrote Die With Zero. I'm not sure if you guys are yeah, familiar yeah. with him. So like at one point, Bill wanted to get into Twitch some and did this thing. And I, we just told Vage and we we're like, look, stop like working for all these people. Stop doing two, hundreds of things, just work for us. And he came on, he's been with me since. And he kind of, you know, comes up with overlay, graphics, designs, all kinds of cool stuff. And it's just been you know, a constant uh, constant show of, of streaming and poker. And in the US, it's hard because I'm American born in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and you can't play poker on the major sites like GG Poker. You can't just go, which is partnered with World Series of Poker. So like you can win a bracelet online, but I can't play in Miami. I can't just log on and play on GG Poker. So it's very, it's it's confusing. It's a whole nother, it's crazy situation, but you, I'd have to, I could, I can be a U.S. citizen, have a Canadian address or my, you know, my wife's Brazilian. I go to Brazil coming up. I can play online poker in Brazil, but not in the U.S. So you could like, technically VPN people, it's not allowed, it's illegal, I don't do that. 
But like that would, you know, some people have well, tried that and they'll usually catch you, but you cannot play. Like right now I can't play on GG Poker in LA. I couldn't is do it, it because California. you're a resident of Michigan? I mean, it's all about taxes. It's just, no, so no, it's about United the U.S. States the United States oh, is US. blanket yeah. off, but now Michigan is legalized. Nevada got legalized maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. New Jersey's For legal. Online. But it's complicated as well because if you, even if you're in Nevada or New Jersey, you can't play with the international pool. So they have like a segregated. Wow. So now in Michigan, where I'm from, they just legalized like a year or two ago in Pennsylvania, but you're only playing against Michigan players. So mm. it's not that exciting either. If I'm home yeah. for the hot, for Michigan, I want to play a big tournament on Sunday or try to win a world series of poker bracelet during, you know, August, September, when they run these, I can't be in Michigan and play with that pool. So it's yeah. like a, so it's, it's a bit complicated, but that was um, one of the, the hardest parts about Twitch for me was that I always had to try. Like I was literally, I met my wife in uh, I was Burning Man 2014. I had come up with the idea a little bit later in 2015 early. And then we were having to travel. I would be in a suitcase with a laptop. Internet wasn't even that good. Like I'd be in Brazil or New Zealand. Sometimes I go to yeah. an Airbnb or hotel. I could, I get online. I couldn't even get up on the internet. So you know, I was really like handicapped with that for not just like living in Canada or uh, Brazil and just being able to stream every day. So like yeah. that was in itself a big battle to have to like, travel around and try to find good internet. And it's so tilt. You have no idea the tilt yeah. and like times where like, I'll get set up, set everything up and then it doesn't work. Have to move hotels, move Airbnb, oh, or geez. I have a bad connection, you know, bad streaming quality where the picture's in and out. I mean, it, Dude, yeah, it was, this, yeah. This could easily, <laughs> this could easily be the premise for an awesome show. Right. Yeah. Like think about how badass that'd be, you know, and all the hiccups that come involved with trying to play poker across the world and then yeah. like becoming a world champion. So like that, like, yeah. yeah. It would be pretty cool. There's There has been some cool poker stuff. Uh, it is, like I said, there's some back, you know, a lot of home games, privacy stuff. Like there's streams, Hustler Casino here and uh, Live at the Bike. They do these televised shows, but, you know, that's just like playing at the table. Like here's to your point. It would be cool to like yeah. watch a, the life of someone playing poker and traveling around. But, you know, some of it's, that's a problem though. You go to a home game, not everyone's going to want to be on camera or whatever, yeah. you know? So it's, it's a bit tricky, but I do think it would be interesting. So where do you go to compete in the World Series of Poker? Because like when Brock and I came to visit you, I mean, we were in Vegas at the casino. Yep. Um, but like if you want to play online, where do you go for that? So the, the World Series of Poker, they have on GG Poker, they're partnered. So they do a, again, from the jurisdictions that are allowed, which is not everywhere. The U.S. is not part of that. Um, but like a lot of UK, you know, UK, Mexico, Canada, it's a lot of the world. It's just not U.S. And there's a bunch of other places you can't as well. And then the live one is at the in Vegas. Now it's called. Um, it was at Rio for a long time, where where you where, guys came and yeah. and I was playing there. Um, and then it moved to Bally's, which is now rebranded as the Horseshoe, which was the original World Series of Poker. So they have a horse. It's at Bally's, across from sort of Kitty Corner Bellagio, or across the street actually from Bellagio. And uh, during the summer, there's like 70, 80 events where you you can win a World Series of Poker bracelet. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I would always watch it, the World Poker Tour on uh, on TV, mm -hmm. uh, especially in high school and growing up. But uh, seeing it and seeing all the rooms and going in person, it's a totally different vibe. It's yeah. it's pretty dang cool. Yeah, online and live is completely different. It really is. Like there's there's nothing like going in a tournament, being having chips, get deep, and you know it's 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 pretty crazy. Like uh, the variance in it too. You could you could be the best player in the world and not win a bracelet. You could be not a great player and win several bracelets. You know, it comes down to, again, we I say about poker, it's a, it's like the most pure game of like skill, but also the right amount of luck where anyone could win on any given day. And I think that's part of the allure of the game, why it's so fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like if you're betting on a player to win, it's still kind of like, you obviously it's got to be a good player, like you said, but yeah. you never really know. Yeah, anyway, I mean, look, the main event, 10K buy-in, it lasts about a week. There's many days and some amateurs have won. They've, they've actually lasted in, in like four, eight days playing poker have beat some of the best professionals in the world so yeah it's uh you know it's like golf too like the golf the best players say, they don't win it's actually the most similar to golf you know, i was telling you guys earlier to go from 120 in golf to a 90 or 100 that's not crazy hard but to that you start getting down like 80 in golf 75 to get to like scratch and then to be a professional like the difference is so intense and, and there's a lot of attributes and intangibles that kind of make that up just like anything but poker in particular too there's a lot of it's a lot, there's a lot to it. You know, bankroll management, uh, playing in good games, making good decisions. Um, you know, like I said, you could, be the, you could be the 10th best player in the world. And if you're playing a home game with the nine other best players, like it's not going to do you much good. You could be the, the, the two millionth best player in the world and play with no one that's better than you and you could clean up. So that's important. Yeah. Game selection, knowing where you stand, not having an ego, but um, you know, list goes on. There's a lot of, yeah. poker's fun and 
it's it's an amazing game. And like I said, I met some of my closest friends and relationships through poker and just very grateful for the uh for a lot of stories, a lot of crazy stuff, yeah. a lot of 20 years of traveling and, and been in some tight spots and some crazy, crazy swings, <laughs> highs and lows for sure. So what would an exciting game look like for you? What is that? Is it the World Poker Tour? Is it a home game? Is it, you know, what it, would it be? Yeah, I'd say, you know, historically home games have been the more exciting, like the higher stakes where there's there's bigger money and the games are better, right? You go to the Bellagio or Aria or the win and, you know, you got a mixed bag. You're going to go in there. You just, anyone can sit down and you have a lot of really good players. If you're fortunate enough to be in a home game of a, of a good size and, guys are not professionals and you get to play um you know i was playing in a game in houston texas for about three years like i'd fly in twice a week um probably around the time we met it was like 2012 to 14 15 i would play pretty regular there and there's high stakes games you know crazy stuff like big big stakes big big stuff and um <laughs> a lot of good memories stories and some uh, epic you know epic games like I, i've had a i really have had for me like whether i would do i can't really imagine doing something else like even if i maybe could have made more money in something or do be a doctor, lawyer, some other real estate, like that's all great. And I just wouldn't change it for anything. Like I literally have made so many interesting, unique relationships and gotten to see so many cool things. Like to this point in my life, I'm 36. I wouldn't trade for anything, no matter what. And, uh, and I'm very, you know, I'm very grateful for like the travel, right? The aspect of getting to go around the world and see some cool stuff. So I just like, I love poker so much. And I, I get, I get, it's like hard. I'm so passionate about it, but I also, you know, it's kind of a weird thing too. Cause there's like negative connotations with, with gambling. And it's like, mm. is poker gambling? Is it, you know, it's not like betting sports or playing slots or whatever there you have, you kind of set your own risk and your own edge, right? When you get gamble on sports, you're paying the juice, you're losing, you can't really win. If you're playing roulette, guess what? You're paying 5.4% a spin on a double zero, 2.7% on a, on a, on a uh, single zero. Right. So if you bet a hundred dollars on a single zero roulette, which is like the European, which they don't yeah. really give you many, much, much of that, much of that in the, the casinos, you're literally burning $2 and 70 cents every spin. doesn't matter. Like that's the math. So if you bet a thousand dollars a spin, you're losing $27 just automatically. That's, I mean, of course you could win. You might win that day. You might win, you know, for a month straight or a year, but like that is the EV that you are giving up every time you bet a thousand on paper, you're losing 27. You know? A lot of people think roulette's 50 50, right? But the two, and then they added another green. Right. So it's even worse than that. Right. You, like you can't just go red or black. Well, it's all, it's, it's the 50 payouts 50. as well, right? So, all right, if you hit a number in roulette and it's 35 to one, if you bet $100 on 22, Studio 22, you put 100 on 22 and it hits, right? What do they pay you? You guys know? What is it, 34 to one? 30, it's 35 it's to one. 32, is it 32? They pay 35 to one. So they'll give you 3,500 back, right? Right. But how many numbers are there on a wheel? Oh, that's, yeah, there's a uh, 35. No. 30, or 37 because the 30. Greens. So there's 36 plus the single zero and another zero. So there's actually 38 on the uh, double zero. So that's why they're paying you out 35 to one, but there's really 38. Now, yep. if they paid you 38 to one, there would be no 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 Bellagio. Yeah. They would, it wouldn't be built. But because they're to every bet, they're taking. They're not paying you the yeah. even money. That that's the thing. So anyway, that's my rant on gambling. And and yeah, it's it's fun. <laughs> I love it. And it's um. But yeah, the poker where me and you, if we guys play right now, you know, I would I would hope I would win over time. Now tonight we might we could play. You guys could easily win. Of course, anything could happen. But yeah. like if we play for a year, and we play twice a week, once a week. Like I would. You're you gonna know, average out winning. Yeah, I'd be yeah. disappointed not to be ahead. You know, <laughs> anything could happen. I'd be disappointed to play with you for a year and keep getting my ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for you sure. Know? Well, that's the, that's the beautiful thing about home games. Like a lot of people, like they love it, right? It's like if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go gamble with a world class golf player, it's people do this too, though. They go out in the golf course, they yeah. give a handicap, they play, and you know you're not as good as someone. But that's what they there is at least a handicap. Whereas in poker, generally you don't go to a game. And you say, hey, if if I lose, you know. Uh, whatever say a thousand dollars i'm only going to pay you 800 like that, right. that's not really how it works so it's sort of uh you know there is a, there is a skill gap a lot of the time speaking of good home games yep. we had over uh justin smith shout out justin and then daniel cates uh aka jungle man who shout out jungle man you're the you're the best and uh <laughs> we had me brock and our buddy morton yeah. and um it was obviously like a friendly game and to the point where dan would like flip over a hand and play it out and be like, this is what I do here. Yep. And this is what, but we ended up playing from like 2 PM to 11 PM. And it, I mean, it was so much fun being able to play with, you know, people of that, of your caliber. And like, you get to learn a little bit, you get in the action a little bit. And then I'm pretty sure they, everybody waved off like the, you know, whatever we were playing for. Cause no one 
There right. was no money trading hands, but right. yeah, it was just a fun. fun, friendly game. But yeah, it was super fun. Like I really love those private home games where you're just having a good time and yep. you learn a lot. And I mean, it got pretty competitive at the end with uh one-on-one with Morton and Dan too. It was pretty cool. Well, I, I'll say this is similar to golf poker again. What I believe is the one of the coolest things about it is you learn so much about people right away. So, you know, when we're playing, yep. like whether or not you're obviously a professional or someone plays a lot is going to have a, 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 a advantage or should be able to conduct themselves more you know, naturally because they, they understand it more. But, you know, when you see, if I'm playing with you and I take a bad beat, right? Let's say I have ace king, you have ace queen. We go all in and I, and you hit a queen, right? There's a lot of ways to handle it. How do you celebrate your success? How do I celebrate when I get defeated? Now on golf, you play with the guy, you're playing for money, something friendly. How do you handle when they hit a hole in one? How do you handle when they have, when they make a great shot? Are yeah. they cheat? Are they moving the ball? Do they take a drop, a, a close decision? Do they give you the benefit of the doubt? So these are things that in, in poker, you get to learn about people really quickly, you know, especially if you're playing with them regularly, you kind of know, like, how is the guy? Are they, are they happy when you're winning? Are they, are they, are they a sore loser? Are they a gracious winner? You know, that, that to me is one of the, the more valuable things. And you really do yeah. get to personalize come out of uh, quickly when you're playing over, yeah. like you said, you play nine hours with someone, yeah. you know, it's like, you get to know the guy, you get to you get to you get, yeah. how, how their humor is, how they handle all these things, success and defeat and whatnot. And I think that's one of the, the real reasons you see so many business Per people or different walks of, you know, like from all over, whether you're you, whatever background you are, anything that like you can play and you get to kind of just know someone. Yeah. So you would say that uh, potentially it could be a really good way to learn not only other people, but yourself yeah, from playing. For sure. As yeah. well and get feedback. You know, how do you yeah. show up? How do, do people like playing with you? Do they not? And there's a reason there's some poker professionals that get to play in the best games in the world that are private, even if they're world-class players. And it's, I guarantee you, it's not because these, 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 you know, business, let's call them businessmen are, are not sharp. They know like, Hey, this guy's a professional and he's getting to play here. So they have to like you. They have to, yeah. you know, they maybe want to learn some stuff for you, but there's a lot, there's a, there's a hundred thousands of great players. So yeah. like, if you are able to play in good games and people know that you're a good player, that's a you know, testament to yourself that you're yeah. able to, that, that people want, are willing to play with you in those circumstances. I love the golf analogy too, because it's like, if you get invited to Augusta and you're not marking your ball and cleaning your divots, you're not going to come back to Augusta, mm. right? right? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, etiquette, uh, all that, all that stuff matters. Yeah. And, and it, it goes a long way and it just, it's accelerating a poker table. You just get so many math things like luck yeah. and, and, and that happen, you know, you, you just, it, it happens like collisions and you really do get to, and like I said though, someone who's played for a long time should be better at that than maybe like you're naturally going to be tilted if you take a bad beat or if you, you know, get lucky, you're going to like, yeah. you know, get like really animated. And that's nothing wrong with I, that. Right. But you don't want to like rub it in someone's face or you don't want to be like, man, yeah. you're so bad. Like, how could you do that? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, so. I, I'm like a pretty passionate player. If I, if I like win or go down, like I'll definitely react to it, you know, but I won't do it in like an asshole way. No, of I'm course. Like, that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. And, and it's all good. If you, if you like win a pot and you're jumping up all yeah, over the place, that's fine. Up, but like, it's another thing. If you like, you know, coming at the guy like you, you know, you <laughs> stink and like, how could you do no, that? Or no, man, no. I crushed you. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, so, but, but yeah. But fun. those guys, they, that's why I like friendly games too. Cause it's like, you're really just there to hang out and have fun. So it's like, yeah. I've, I've seen that watching a lot of poker online. There's, there's a lot of egos, uh, they get in, get in the ring, get in the, uh, at the table. And, um, one thing I've noticed about some of my favorite players to watch and, uh, you know, people like you and like jungle man too, it's, it's, it almost seems like emotion is taken out of it, you yeah. know, and it becomes just a uh, more of a numbers game, but also, you know, reading the room, reading the table and all that stuff. Is that something you, you think so as well? Yeah, for sure. I, I'd say that the biggest, like this, uh, full tilt poker you may have heard of like that word tilt, that's like a very common poker word. And, and, and generally in poker, everyone's a and B games are very different. Like a professional, that's the, that's the biggest difference between an amateur and a professional is that the tilt, like when you, you know, you walk in and you can have a game plan and you're like, Hey, I know I'm supposed to fold this hand pre-flop. Like I shouldn't play this hand or I shouldn't do that. So most people know this, right? Even at like a, like once you get to a basically okay level, like, but then the difference is if I lose, if I'm stuck a bunch in a game or losing or not going well, you know, typically I'm not going to just like parlay that and make it worse and double down and start playing crazy hands and go nuts. Whereas you see people that are amateurs when this does happen their a like their their a game and d game are very different you know what i mean like the a and b it's like it, it, that people unhinge they go off the rocker they go off the wheels they chase it's all out the window you know like they would maybe not normally call on a draw for whatever now they'll if you go all in they'll call they don't care because they they're so that, that's the biggest difference between amateurs and professionals and i mean that's another perfect golf analogy too because like 
when we play golf with pro golfers and you're just having fun at a discovery property, yeah. you know, they'll hit a shot with a beer in one hand and hit it one handed, right? Like yeah. that's a D game thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, and they can, they have that ability to turn it off and like they love the game of golf so much that they're playing golf on their day off. However, it's a different type of golf. Yeah, no, it's yeah. exactly. I, I actually think poker and golf are so similar. And even in the tournaments where it's like, all right, day one, day two, day three, day four, golf, right? There's day one, day two, there's cuts. People get yeah. knocked out. Po you know, it goes down. The prizes as well, also shaped like that. You know, first place is second, third, it kind of, you know, curves. So it's it's like it's like a mirror image. You see these sites, uh, you know, DraftKings too, a basically modeled poker. Um, you know, and then golf, I don't know if you guys are wagering this stuff. It's it's fun. And it's it, they've taken sort of the same thing. There's heads up one versus one competitions or sit and go models, right? Nine handed, six handed games. And there's the, the, the big ones, like the, the huge prizes and whatever. So it's yeah. similar type thing, but um, yeah, it's a uh, poker golf are, I, I think the closest thing you could, you could kind of mirror and, and, and be the same. Absolutely. Great mirrors. And especially being two different, uh, you know, sports, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, it just, it's funny. It reminds me of, of, I've been on big sets and small sets and everything in between and seeing an actor, uh, so many times I see a newer actor get so upset in the moment or they're not able to like invoke the emotion they're looking for or whatever it is. They, they just aren't getting across with it. Mess up a line, they get pissed, right? Yeah. Well, then they can't get back to that square, that square one or mm -hmm. to back to good to actually do what they need to do in the scene. So then the entire day or, you know, that scene is kind of jeopardized or ruined right. versus somebody who's great. You see them, oh, they mess up. <laughs> that's part of the gig, you know, whatever, right. it's all good and start right back. And then you, they do an amazing take and move on from there. It's really yeah. about how you get up after you fall. Right. Yeah. Not, a, not about what happens, how you react. That's, that's one exactly. of the biggest things. And yeah, same thing. Poker is just like accelerate everything. Whereas you might be a movie shooter, golf, but poker, it's like next hand, you know, like yeah. you don't have long to, to kind of hide. You're kind of just right back in the next hand. If you're playing in a tournament or game, you got to, you know, yeah, you were chip leader. Now you're short stacked. Yeah. Like, can you, can you shift that, that perspective and be able to play your best in that moment? And yeah. So, it makes yeah. me want to, I wish we were playing poker right now, dude. I, you listen, know? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm available. <laughs> so you're over 180 episodes on your podcast. Yep. You do video as well, though, correct? Yes. And you've been on Twitch for a long time, too. Yep. And it's Flow po the Flow Poker Show. Poker Flow Show. Poker yeah, started, Flow Show. Yep, 2015. I, got, I saw some people that I knew in poker that sort of pivoted and were, were doing this. They, they were... And I was like, man, I love people. I want to make my a brand. Like, I want to do something where it's recorded. There's there's content you can repurpose it for Twitter, Instagram. I don't even remember if Instagram was around then. I, I can't remember for whatever. Like just coming big, out. Yeah. And I was like, you know, it's it's fun because now you could have some affiliate deals. You could have some po potential sponsorships. Like that was you know kind of my goal. It's very it's it's similar but different than pro sports, right? Poker. There's like I don't know five or six major companies. So there's not 32. There's a handful. So a lot of people kind of can bounce around. They've been at one or another. But I was like, you know, I was. 2015, what's that, seven years? I'm trying to think, uh, seven, eight years ago. Yeah, I was yeah. like 27, 28. And I was thinking, hey, I want to get a sponsorship deal. Like that's like the, you know, back in the day, these guys that are on full tilt. When I was like 10 years before, they got, you know, these they, they, they're sponsored. They they're get paid to wear a brand and represent a poker site. That was my goal always. And then when I, I saw Twitch as an avenue to do that, and I did that. And then in 20, you know, 17, I got a deal with Poker Stars. That was like my first real uh, contract, which was pretty, I was like, man, this is cool. Like I've been working hard at this and now I got a, a deal. And then, you know, I've been with a couple other sites and now with GG, which is the, like I mentioned earlier, is the, the main site. They have the largest market share. They're partner with World Series of Poker. You can win a bracelet during this period of time. If you mm -hmm. play on here and you win, it counts as like a World Series of Poker bracelet. There's Hell like, yeah. yeah, it's, 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 it's cool. And, and, uh, great software, love the team, love where it's at, love the vision of the company. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. And I, I just, I, I literally love poker. I just want to you know, now I feel like it's starting to get the shackles ripped off about negative connotations. Like it's mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, when I'm at a dinner or somewhere, I meet someone, it's kind of like, I never know if it's like, it ends up being like, I feel like I get asked the most questions because it's so like different, right? It's like, oh, you really play professional poker? And it, it's kind of weird, right? People, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's cool, but then I also feel like kind of like people are kind of like suspect about it, right? So it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? But it feels like now though, it's become more mainstream. I feel less With Draft like that. Kings and everything around. I mean, it's, like, I mean, DraftKings is sports, but all gaming in general, uh, sports are legal at a federal level. I think it's in like 38 or 40 states, right? So exactly, right, that's big. Yeah. And now poker sort of piggybacking in Pennsylvania and Michigan got legalized for, like I told you, it's not, they don't get to play with everyone, but it's the first step. You need liquidity yeah. in poker. You know what I mean? You need you need a player pool that's big. That's why back in the day before the UIEGA in 2006, that's when they like 
kind of shut it down, full tilt poker stars, they just like close the doors. Before that, you know, you want to play $215 Sunday million, you could be in California, be in New York, pay 200 bucks, million dollar guaranteed prize pool. You know, for 200 bucks, you're playing poker all day. You, you get on Sunday, start around noon, watching TV, watching football, you know, in the tournament, if you go deep, you're up. If, you, if you're out, whatever, you win 250, 300,000. But there was thousands of tournaments like this all across the board. And then that wow. kind of, I, I was in New York when it happened. I remember waking up in the DOJ, on the website and I, it was just crazy. I woke up, was ready to play and then it was just shut down. April 15, 2011 to the, the Black Friday, I call it in poker. And that was when it like really um, went down like uh, like huh. hard. So, and, and from then it was not the same. That's when it shifted. Yeah, I was gonna ask you how much that changed the industry at the time. Well, so for uh, honestly, this is like we just mentioned about it's not what happens, how you react to what happens. This mm -hmm. to me was like my moment in life. Like I was, I, I remember I was living in Baltimore um, with Phelps, who oh, yeah. that's how we, you know, we, we came down for Discover. We met, that's why I think 2011 or 12. Down we in met Cabo. in Cabo for, he was filming the Haney Project. So, yeah, um, yeah. but I was living that with him. That episode was at Eldo. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. That was, well, and, and Hank Haney was telling us at the time when we were shot in a few other places. I mean, it was his show. I was living with him. I came on, I was golfing. I was terrible. I never golfed. It was a blast. <laughs> but, but like, I, I just remember Hank saying like, oh man, you go, you know, you're going to never, like, this is not real life. You got to see this place. Like kept saying about like the comfort stations and this yeah. is like not real or whatever. Anyway, this is a completely side story, but yes. Yeah, so around this time I, I was living with him and I could play poker anywhere. I was living in Baltimore, Maryland, and I would play online poker. I was in New York for the weekend. And then I woke up and it changed my life completely. Cause I went from being able to play online poker, wake up, roll out of bed, you know, uh, and, and play. And now I couldn't, now I'd like go to Canada, get an address, get a bank account. If I want to play, I have to go over the border, uh, or go to Mexico. And so a lot of poker players kind of stopped and then some relocated and moved full time, um, mm -hmm. to these countries, mostly Mexico, Canada, right. in the U S but for me, it was, this was a biggest shift because I was playing a lot of online poker. And I thought in the moment, I was like, man, my life's over. Like this sucks. Like I'm going to get a job or like what's going to happen. But then pretty quickly, I looking back, realized that that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I was, I, you know, I played soccer my whole life through college. I was in school. So right after that, I moved to Baltimore in 2008. So a few years, I'm like, you know, completely out of shape. I wake up, we, 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 we I literally play online poker until I busted the tournaments at like whatever, 10, 11, 12 at night. We go downstairs, play beer pong eat, order Chinese Ding Hao. And it was like the repeat. I wake up, get out of bed and whatever. So I was kind of just like in this funk and spiral, not thinking about it. And then when it happened, I started playing more live poker. I started traveling, going to Montreal, going around the tour, playing live tournaments, you know, and, and really like spreading out my, uh, the routine I was in. So it worked out, you know, I, I had to go to Canada, get a bank, do the, do the address, get set up. But like, I had this extra thing where now sometimes I'd play online or go out of the country, you know, like at, at uh, an Eldorado, like where I came that time when you guys were there and I was yeah. streaming yeah, yeah, on you Twitch. Were it's like 2017 during I September. I remember like we, we popped in on the stream and like the moment we did, you hit like a huge hand. Yeah, yeah. That was great. Yes, yeah. no, it was amazing. That view, that view was, uh, that, that helped to be relaxed because you need to be. But it was, that was like, you know, that was me traveling around. That was it. I had to be in Mexico, I had to be in Canada. But, but then I was, doing other stuff. Like I wasn't just fully online poker and just kind of like going through the motions and, you know, missing on a lot of opportunities. But I think that's like, again, the biggest things in life, you just, in the moment when you, you know, a breakup or a relationship or whatever, right? Something happens, you're like, this is the worst. I feel terrible. That is like those type of moments that sort of spur you to, to, to find your power to get yep. into it, get motivated and, and attack. So that was, uh, yeah, looking back, best thing ever happened to me in the moment. I thought it was like going to be a new career, new thing. So- yeah, it sounded like it was an opportunity to diversify what you were doing already, right? Yep. Like you, like you just said, that's great. Yeah. I'm still thinking back to the beginning of uh, uh, when you realized that you could make make money with poker. You know, you couldn't really do that with video games. I'm thinking like if Twitch came out a little earlier, or if people were making money yeah. like they are now, do you think you would have ever gone down the video game route in a way? Well, I mean, it's just the tipping point. This Malcolm Gladwell yeah. stuff too, like right place, yeah. right time. Bill Outliers, Gates, Outliers, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. This for, this one in particular, where Bill Gates, right? He's living in what? See, Washington. There's the access to the world's first computer. He's kind Tech of around there. And, yeah. yeah. So it's not perfect. Like, and and I wish poker was earlier because when I started playing in 2003 and four online, I was playing like 25 cent, 50 cent buying blinds. So I'd buy in for 10 bucks, 25 bucks. You know, if this was like earlier, I mean, cause like, even like Jungle Man, who was a, the biggest online poker winner in the history, right? He was a little bit ahead. He was playing the higher stakes when it was super soft. So he was able to like, you know, really attack. He was playing like much bigger games and was winning the most money at that level. Wow. So like he was like a couple years ahead of me and in, in, in that sense, but you know, it's yeah, of course, like Twitch as well. Like, man, if can I can't if Twitch was in two thousand four when I was in college, like who yeah. knows? Like, I would have been at like you know, what I mean, it would have been like a uh, 
12 year head start on like that stuff. So I'm almost like, feel like too yeah. old, you know, I have a kid. It's like harder, you know, it's not like I'm just in a suitcase traveling to Brazil and, and in streaming all day long. I can't do it. I can't spend 10, 12 hours yeah. a day playing a poker tournament. Um, but, but still, you know, it worked out. It was a good time, good period and kind of pushed hard. And, and now I do different stuff, do a little bit. I'm not just, you know, yeah, more diversified. I, I love it to be totally honest. If Twitch came out when I was in high school, I could have been a professional Halo 1 player on yeah. Xbox. Like, <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like, there wasn't one person in my boarding school that could beat me yeah. in that game. Well, that, that, like, that, not even close. And, and just like your personality, too, you would have, you probably would have done it. You yeah. Like, like, been like, man, I'm, I'm like, seeing people go. are playing. I see these guys, Ninja and this guy and that guy yeah. online streaming, doing it. I can do it. And, and, yeah. and if I'm going to play, that's what I'm saying. Like, why not? Right. If you're, yeah. if I'm playing poker online, why not? do like build something along with it and yeah, head, yeah, head yeah. yourself right so yeah no, I'm, it, t- it would have you know i'm speaking in like generalities but i it would have been an option that would have been cool to at least try right yeah. i like mm-hmm. well now i mean that's the thing too like the sprite commercial and what'd you win it's like now for kids if you you kind of have an out a little bit if you're going to play video games and you know yeah. you have a, if you're going to do that maybe that's what your parents can't get necessarily say what are you going to do what are you going to make yourself when you grow up what like you is. could you could aspirationally there's there's esports are going nuts right this yeah. is like a yep. huge huge Sp- industry and and now it's like kids are there's different leagues different teams yeah. like different it's all over the place so well, some of those games are getting you know 10x what the super bowl is getting yeah and as far as views and people online and stuff like that it's like no it's wild over I, in korea too they have yeah. stadiums people go watch these things i've seen it harry before. potter just set the twitch record they they had a hundred i think it was like 1.48 million live viewers on twitch wow. uh, when that the day it came out that's yeah it, it's it crazy was, it set the record it's funny because it's it, it does like I, I know my largest uh was actually in cabo a different time and i i, I mean, it was a one thousand dollar buy-in it was a million dollars five million guaranteed a million to first and I made the final table. I, it was like twenty thousand five hundred people were watching, and it was wow. you know we were, I was sitting there in the and online and like you could just feel like the start at day three of the tournament. You you got get in, you know, got a couple thousand on it, and just kept building. You could just feel like it's crazy because like you're just alone. Like it's me talking to a computer screen, but you see that number going up in the comments, and people are interacting with you, and like it's like a it's a wild feeling. It really is like an endorphin yeah. overload, and you know that was I I, lo- I really did enjoy it. Like I, I really love streaming, and now again I don't stream yeah. on Twitch. Um, almost ever. I'll probably like go for like a month a year in Brazil when they have the World Series of Poker online where you can win a bracelet and do like a couple of weeks there, you know, stream from Brazil and relax and do it like for a, you know, a day, uh, each day for a, for a couple week period. But yeah, I just, uh, my longest stream ever was 25 hours straight. Wow. So, but and this is a crazy story. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll, I'll get on. All right. This is wild. So I'm in Brazil, 2018. I'm getting married to my, no, no, I'm sorry. Brazil, 2016 getting married to my wife in Brazil, like small wedding there in her small, small town. And um, I, I go there and the time zone's like one to three hour difference, depending with daylight savings. So it's like a three hour difference in December at this moment from the US. So I, I, I'm i at their house and I start streaming at like 9 a.m. I just, I got up early, but it's like 6 a.m. US. So there's not much going on, but I was like, I'm gonna put in a full day stream. So I start streaming at nine in the morning Day's not going very well. You know, I play maybe like 10 to 20 tournaments on a day, 30 even. Like, oh, wow. you, you know, cause you're playing like $500 buying, $200, $100, $1,000. They have a lot and there's multiple sites. There's GG, there's, you know, poker Can you play starts. multiple hands at once? Like, can you put up like 10 tournaments on your screen at one time and oh, yeah. then you just go yeah, through? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Okay. I play usually eight to 16 at once, but like wow. you're playing much better when it's like four, you know, two or four, like when it's, when it's less, right? Cause you're focusing more, you're kind of just going through it. So anyway, long story short, day's kind of dying down. I play this $500 buy-in, there's one tournament left. It's at seven, it's 4 p.m. Eastern start. And it's like seven o'clock Brazil time. I register the tournament, $500 buy-in, you know, a thousand people, or no, 2000 people, or I think, I forget. It's a million, it's a million dollar guaranteed tournament. And it's a, it's a good size tournament, but only one table. Of course, now I'm focused, right? I don't have like 16 games going. I'm in there playing well, get some chips, this and that. Next thing you know, it gets deep, and I'm like, man, this is kind of crazy. It's like a you know 210,000 at first, and and is a 500 dollars buy. So I get deep, and it's like two in the morning, three in the morning. We're down like a couple hundred. Then it's like four in the morning. I'm like down to like twelve. And I'm like, man, this you know here we go. I was one of the chip leaders, and I end up making a deal three handed. So you like we stop the turn stops, and it's called ICM independent chip model. So you just basically see what the prize pool left is and how many chips you have. So we made a deal, and anyway, so I end up winning this tournament. I, or I end up, I make, I get the most because I'm chip leader. So I got 141,000 and then we played for 20,000 between the three left. So we all got our locked up money 
and I got one four. So I won 141K. I, I ended up losing heads up. So I didn't get the extra 20, but I, wa- I got the most money overall. And, um, but that, and it was 25 hours on Twitch. So the next morning, her parents, my wife, where I'm at her house and she actually was like doing some wedding stuff in her main city. I, I took a bus ride up the day before and, and was there alone and her, they like were, you know, feeding, like it's intense. The breaks, you get five minutes every hour. Like they're bringing me food. I'm scarfing it down yeah. going to the restroom. Oh, and man. then the craziest part is the best part of the story is the next morning, her brother walks in and like, and or first her dad walks in and he doesn't, he does not speak um, fluent English, right? My wife does, but he, she, he doesn't. He sees me. I'm marrying her in two days. You know, I know him, but I, I'm sitting in the same clothes, same seat in the living room, down, like in the in the computer room. So he walks down, you know, he's like, they, they have a he, 6 a.m. or he's something. He's like waking he up. He sees me there and he's like, you sleep, sleep? Or no, I go, no, it's okay. And meanwhile, I'm like on the thing screaming, going nuts. And then like, you know, I, I end up getting the thing and like, it was just, it was the craziest thing. 25 hours though. Cause like I stream a lot, but like 12, 14 is like, a lot. That's a so lot. I've never done like that because of the time zone, because of whatever and, and how it worked out. And because I, I usually start around 12 or one and I started early plus the three hour time zone and because of the scheduling of the tournament. So yeah, that was like, that was my like moment where it was like the, that was the, the most fun. And just like the fact of winning that and a hundred, you know, got 141 K and, and yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was special. That was cool. Right. Yeah. Two days before I got right married. For the wedding. So yeah. your wedding present. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was my, that was my favorite Twitch moment. Hell yeah. That is cool. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. That has to be so wild. It's fun. A lot, it's, of, a lot of coffee on that one? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Records. Yeah, yeah, broke. It's out of line coffee for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. So. Dude, I mean, I love hearing that. I mean, when you went from, where did you move from Twitch when you stopped doing Twitch? Is, is that when you set up Flow? Yeah. So so the this Poker Flow show, that's the Twitch. That's like the poker show that I might, the podcast is Jeff Gross. It's, it's just Jeff Gross podcast, but the uh, it's called the Flow Show. This is the poker flow show. So that was like my Twitch sort of channel branding. I have a, you know, content on there where I just do poker stuff. Um, but yeah, that was like 2015 to 2021 even. But you know, okay. I slowed down some because once my son was born, now he's three, almost four. Um, you know, that was like less, we weren't just like, I wasn't like going around flying for the weekend or for a week or two there. So like, I'd say it really slowed down around 2019 where I would still do some, but not like all the time. And then that's kind of same time I started the podcast. I was like, I want to do something where I can just do it. I don't have to worry where I'm living. It's not illegal to play online, you know, to do yeah. a podcast from my house. Like I'm just going to do that, have it set up. And then that, that's kind of why I wanted to uh, segue from, from streaming to do some other content. So where they, they can find the Jeff Gross podcast, anywhere podcasts are found, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All the, you know, spot, uh, any iTunes, Spotify, anywhere audio. And then the, the, the videos are out on YouTube as well, but usually okay. that's don't, like I, I a don't have the, yes. Yeah. Video on YouTube and then podcast. Yeah. 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 Yes. So that's, that's been fun. And, and really, as you said, that's like the, the cool part to talk to people you already know, kind yeah. of learn something, see different genres, see people that are motivated and, and looking at, you know, do their best in whatever it is they're doing. Cause it's, uh, it's, it's great, man. It's great to see people that are, that are fired up and, and, and putting their best foot forward. Hell yeah. Yeah. So you, so you mentioned, uh, that was your favorite Twitch moment. Do you have a favorite, uh, poker moment or, or any great <laughs> stories of people you've been around, I people mean, you've met? The, again, poker for me. So just looking off the top of my head, some of literally the closest friends in my life I met playing poker, Michael Phelps, right? 2006, he was, went to university of Michigan. I'm living, I'm in from Ann Arbor, Michigan, but it was like, I was home for college for the summer and I met him playing poker just in the summer. And then it turned out we, we got, we came very close. And next, you know, I lived with him 2008 till 15. I got to go, go, went to El Dorado with him. I've met so many of my closest friends and relationships I've had for 10 plus years through being there. Right. So it's like, you know, Bill Perkins as well. One of my closest friends met him through poker, Antonio Esfandiari, who uh, you guys got to have on? He lives around here, and and he's an ama- amazing guy, magician as well. Won the biggest tournament ever, like literally oh, wow. one of my best friends, and met him through poker. So it's like I look around in my life, and it's like either directly or tangentially through poker, I've gotten some of the the most interesting and unique relationships that that have happened. I forgot what was the question specifically because I get I get fired up. Uh, favorite <laughs> poker oh, moment. Favorite yeah, yeah. poker. So yeah. p- favorite poker moment. Um, man, probably. Uh, I mean, there's, there's so many like fun stories or cash games or unique places in the world, but I think probably the most like impactful was when I went to Montreal playground poker and they, Antonio got like a deal there. This is 2012. They tell him like, Hey, come in, you can fly in, you can bring some friends, pay for everything, flights, hotel, buy-in, $3,500 buy-in tournament. It's supposed to be like three or 400 player tournament. They had built this extra room there. Like, a I had been there once before and it was just like a, you know, I don't know. 
like a card room with 10 tables, but then they basically opened like a Costco in the back, like size room with all these tables and they did a world poker tour. So it was like 1,172 people and I ended up getting third for like 320,000. They gave me the buy-in for free. I was like, you know, 10 years, it was like 25, 26. It was like a significant score for my personal bankroll. Cause like when I play some high stakes cash games or, or tournaments, generally I have like people that buy action or I'm staked. Right. So like for yeah. me, for a 3k buy-in, like I had my, my entire action and winning 300 grand was like a significant bankroll uptick, right. For where I was at. Oh, yeah. So that was like, I mean, that was crazy. And that was a, a wild memory. It was like 900 to first or 800,000 to first. And I took a sick, sick beat. I was like 93% on the flop, 92.4%. And I got beat. So I would have knocked the guy out and bet heads up for like a really big pay jump, but still it was like third place, final table, world poker tour. You know, it was like a, it was a, that was a marquee moment for me for sure. Incredible. 321,000 on a, roughly at three, yeah. three something. And I, like third place in a gigantic tournament. Yeah. I mean, that's so, and, and so honestly, sick. like I, I, like I said, whether you, it doesn't necessarily define you, but I have, um, I'm, it's a little bit, unlo it hurts me because I've gotten a second in a world series of poker bracelet, got it in with the ace jack to King 10, literally like he had 13 blinds. I had 11. It was like, we were playing till 2 a.m. On the third day, they were about to stop and pause the next day. I get it in good, slight favorite, whatever, 60, 40 or something, basically to win, don't win. This one in Montreal, I get in pocket fours, the king 10 off, it comes jack eight, four. So I have a set of fours. Like I really can't, it's hard to lose. Like yeah, he has king 10 high. Kind. He can't yeah. even hit king, king. He yeah, has to hit like yeah. a running straight or running flush. And he did. It was a queen of hearts, <sighs> ace of hearts. Like, so I get third, right? Wow. And then there's another, the 100K alpha eight, it was my largest score. I think I got 414,000. I got same thing. Got it in with two pair versus a guy's flush draw. Would have knocked him out and chip leader heads up. Guy hits the flush on the turn. That's like the televised WPT uh. eight. So I get third for like 414. You know, sit and I have a lot of these like second and thirds. The Premier League, same thing. 125K buy ins. Like, you know, all the biggest names they invite, 12, 12 person one, I get second. So like I have so many seconds and thirds and like, it's not, I can look, I can be honest. Listen, I'm not the best poker player in the world, but still like at some point when you get deep and you're there, you know, like it hurts when you like, it's like coin flips or yeah. close spots. You actually have the best hand and you lose. So you even know, though you're making a ton of cash, it's like, yeah, that well, you want of, that trophy, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that like yeah. real like signature win, you know, it's just, uh, but it's, you know, it is what it is. And like, honestly, I looking back now too, I realize how good the best really are. And like, the truth is like, I think I'm a good poker player, but it's like, I realize these guys like jungle man or, you know, whatever I can name a hundred names. These guys are like, winning everything like they're really 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 good you know what i mean like yeah. I, I feel like i'm good but like they're i know they're better than me so like in a way i'm kind of like man maybe i don't deserve it i could have worked harder to win it but then i'm also like man you know a bunch of times second and thirds like it's not like i'm just it's not like i'm just out you know it's an arm wrestling or something the guy's just better than me it's like all right like we're talking about sick hands and percentages where like the math is the math and like the money's all in and it's like so whatever but i, I mean look i've won tournaments but but not a i don't have that mark that stamp like major big one you know like that i can just like show my kids when i grow up like yeah okay i won some stuff and i did okay but like i want to have that you know i'm still playing i'm around Dude, I don't you're play. still very young I, too i don't play as much as i used to but i will i will get a bracelet i mean i'm gonna i i want to win I'm, yep. i want to go for it and i gotta you know i know what to do so i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna dive back in and, and make a make a big big push on it can we do another episode when you get your bracelet yeah, yeah, we, will, it'll happen. absolutely. I know, for, keeping your word on that. Yeah, 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 for sure. You guys might have them before me. It happens. You know, it's like it's like, <laughs> no, it's like a hole in one. You know, a guy, right. a guy, I have a guys that not very yeah. good at golf have like eight hole in ones, <laughs> yeah. and I got my boy like Silverman just got his first. Phelps oh, just really? got his first. They play a lot. Congrats, and actually, to at, El, at El Dorado. Phelps, dude. Yeah, Hell yeah. And and but you know oh, how it goes. Awesome. It doesn't mean that's what I'm saying. It doesn't mean they're a better golfer than than you. But uh, do you have a hole in one? And I don't. See? man. But, and I'm like. I've gotten I've gotten like three or four where yeah. literally resting against the flag. Yeah. Like, oh man. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff I, I, in the universe I don't understand, right? It really is like a fascinating. This is another podcast, yeah. like talk about uh, simulations and stuff. But yeah. there's certain things that just like I, I just like I don't fully understand, like why certain things just happen or you know a, a split blink. Uh, but again, we're all pretty lucky, right? We're alive. Anyone's listening? We're here. You know. And it's uh, everything, you know what I mean? So it's all, it, it, I, poker teaches you perspective as well with variance because mm. it's so easy to think I'm unlucky or like, why, that, why did I not get this job? Why did this thing happen? But really, you know, it's all one big sort of game, right? Variance of life. Like, you know, yeah. you, you pull out, like, could get, get in a fender bender today. Like something like still as small as that, like a, where, you yeah. know, this, but and then it's like, oh, well, you know, I didn't win this hand or, 
this didn't happen or the Super Bowl, you know, like looking at this, like the Eagles or the call, like little things. Like, again, I think it's just a lot about the lessons and learnings and understanding that, yeah, that's, the, that's I think yeah. the most impactful thing is it's not about what happens, it's how you react. That's that's one of the best best I, things. I did a podcast the other day with a friend of mine um, and I literally said the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I, I believe it wholeheartedly. You know, it's, it's you can react one way and it could ruin your entire day, everyone else's day around you, or you can react the, the opposite of that and it, you know, everything's kosher, man. It's all good. Yeah. And, and it can dictate, uh, you know, your entire life. Yeah. And My- if you're making that kind of dough and like you're out there doing it as a profession and like, I mean, that's still light years ahead of like where Brock or I would be if we just started trying to like make a living by playing poker. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. it's so much different being yeah. on that, like golf kind of too. Like the difference of a pro and someone like me in golf is light years ahead. Right. Same with poker. Yeah. You know, so it is, even I guess there's like levels even at the top, but like those top levels are just light years ahead of where I would be. Yeah. Right. And and to that point too, though, I mean, somebody who is light years behind can have more fun than the people that are on the top, you know? So it's just about kind of how you show up and have yeah, fun. Or get lucky or- yeah. Yeah, Exactly. Get yeah. lucky or, or, you know, whatever it may be. Like I'm, I'm getting those clubs, uh, golf clubs soon. So uh, yeah, well, it's I'm, a, I'm coming for that hole in one. It, it's, it's, <laughs> important, it's important to enjoy the process, most importantly, yeah. right? Like you guys, you know, they got the cane, the comic, what you guys are doing, like that, like whether that becomes the, the next Marvel or if it just becomes like whatever, right? It's like, you love it, you enjoy it, you're doing it. Yep. And that's like the the fun of it. Like if it hits and it hits, it's like, that's cool. Like that's great. Made some, you know, money or whatever, but that, that I think is like, if you enjoy what you do, uh, it's cliche, but it's like, if that's, if yeah. you do love it, like that's worth so much. Cause there's so much often, you know, I think we get caught in doing things that we yeah. don't want to do saying yes to something you don't want to do, you know, whether it's, you know, like whatever, it could be yeah. big scale or small scale. So I, I think that if you're able to find a way to do that and do something you love, that's like, that's worth way more than, than, than really anything, you know, the podcast too, Yeah, you know, like we actually have some like really big announcements coming pretty soon for the pod and like, you know, taking it from just a random idea we had to like all the special times and value we've gotten out of it. And, yeah. you know, conversations yeah. like this, it, it's pretty, pretty crazy to think about. Yeah. And one other, uh, speaking of like these, these quotes and these things, uh, one thing my dad told me, I don't know where he heard it from, but he would, he would always say, you know, at the poker table to, to kind of let me know, he would always say that you should, you know, lose as if you like it and win as if you expect it. So like, you know, if you take like a, a bad beat, you know, it's like, if I see, if, if I, if I play a pot right on a cash game or a tournament and I leave and I like flip the table or just like, or just yeah. whatever, like, I'm like, man, like, oh, I'm so unlucky or like, this is such a joke or whatever. Right. Versus like, if you knock me out, let's say you have the better, worse hand and you beat me, you know, shake your hand or say, Hey, good game guys. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Or when you go home at night and you lose in a private cash game, you know, you, I see it all the time. People lose big numbers and like, you know, storm off. They don't even say bye. They're freaking out. Like, yeah. what does that say about them versus someone that like, it's like, hey guys, great plan. See you next time. Like that, you know, that person has their stuff together. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, they're like probably pretty well mentally balanced and like, probably yeah. like, wow, that guy's probably crushing life. You know, if you see a guy's hitting the table, he's probably could be financially in trouble, stressed out, have crazy stuff going on and whatever. And the same thing when you win, right? It's like, if you win, you want to like, Celebrating is fine. No problem. Like, yeah, be happy. Yeah. But it's like, like you want to win as if you expect it. Like, yeah, I won. Like, yeah. okay, like, cool. Like, you know, it's not like, uh, you see, you know, athletes embody this too. Like a lot of the ones that are, if you like, you're used to it, act like you've been there. That's, I think yeah. that, that way of thinking is like a good way to sort of go about in, in, in general in life, but in poker, yeah. again, it just happens a lot. Cause it's like these constant situations yeah. of, of, of thing and of math. That was a lesson I learned in sports. Um, I had a lot of life stuff going on when I was young and I joined a team and I was always moving all the time. So I knew I wasn't going to be on this team very long. You know, yeah. high schools, I moved nine times and I think I was about 15 when, when the coach told me this. And so I didn't really have any like joy playing the game because I had so much heavy stuff weighing on me that right. it, I wasn't, I wasn't having fun. Yeah. And he knew that. So he would, but I was crazy athletic. I was insanely fast. Yeah. Uh, uh, I knew I was good. What sport? Were you uh, this was football. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I just knew I was good and, and, but I would never get put in. And so one time, one day he took me aside and luckily this happened before I moved to the next school, which is probably like a week later, to be honest. And, uh, he goes, he's like, I'm not going to play, you know, the person that's the most athletic or the most talented or whatever. He's like, I'm going to put the person who has the most heart, mm -hmm. the person who cares the most, yep. you know? And, uh, he, and he did, you know? And then I saw that moving forward. It was, it was, 
I didn't get joy out of it at that time, mm -hmm. you know? And then when I moved forward and I realized everything I do in my life, whether it's this podcast, uh, it could be making a movie, it could be the comic book, it could be whatever it is. Uh, I love it. You mm -hmm. know, I, I find joy in it and I have passion for it and it changes, you know, um, the way that my life happens because I'll be on movie, I'll be on movie sets and you think anybody likes working with the a-hole? Like no. you, you were, I remember, you know, even small movie sets where there was one person that, you know, he's just having a, either having a bad day or he's in a bad mood or whatever it is. And it ruins the tone of the whole thing. And I'm like, you have to realize one, we're lucky to be alive. We're yep. lucky to wake up in the morning too. We're extremely lucky to be doing this profession, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's a million people that'll come in and take your place, do it better than you and do it cheaper than you. Yeah. You know, so for me, it was just having a, a mindset perspective or a shift of just, okay, just be grateful. Yep. No matter what's going on in life, have gratitude and uh, it, it'll change your world. And because of that, opened up more doors, yep. got invited back to other poker tables, you know, and yeah. uh, kind of just kept going from there. Well, you, you also, you don't know, you know, I've done some personal development courses. I've done some, I, I did a 10 day meditation, no, no writing, no reading, no talking. That was, that Amazing. was the craziest thing I ever did in my life. But wow. um, uh, something else just kind of realizing like everyone goes through, you know, has their, their stuff. Like if you're able to get honest, open feedback and you, you, you realize like you actually may impact someone's there. You don't know what's going on. This guy, you know, yeah. the other coworker, a uh, friend, what they got, what personally they're dealing with, their yep. family has issues. They, you might have personal issues ever. We all have stuff, right? We all have all kinds of stuff. So it's just like, I think it's important to, to realize that and just try to be your best and, and be the best you can to people because you yeah. really don't know, you know, what, what's going on in someone's life. So, you know, it, it's just, yeah, it's important. It's important to be your yeah. best and do your best. Yeah, I talk about it all the time with friends and, and whoever it is. It's like, because I remember my, my heaviest, darkest moments where, uh, it literally was the difference was just someone holding the door open or, or smiling or saying something nice. And I, I, and vice versa, you know, I've, I've had friends who, you know, were bullied or had whatever happened to them yeah. in life. And I showed up for them, uh, because I could relate to it. And if anything, I, I enjoyed almost being a protector and I'm a big brother and kind yeah. of just in my nature, I think in general, um, only to find out later in life that, you know, it helped them not commit suicide right. or, or whatever it yeah. is. So exactly. You don't know regardless of how someone presents themselves in the moment, uh, you don't know what someone's carrying or what weight or like, and I've had that, I've gotten, you know, great news and I've gotten tragic news. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, you gotta be on set in five minutes and be ready and, and call action. I'm like, mm -hmm. what do I do with that though? Right. You know yeah, what I mean? I process and so and, yeah, yeah absolutely. We, we definitely learn as we go and um, it's, it doesn't, never hurts to be kind. For sure. Yeah. This is, uh, I don't even know why, this is like so completely random off topic because we're in LA and I know you go to a fair amount of games, the, the LeBron James breaking the record. Did you see that photo? You saw that one with Phil Knight where he was like the only one in the whole audience not on his phone. Have you seen this or no? It's the no. sickest photo I've ever seen in sports history. It's literally wow. every person in the whole arena has got their phone up and recording and then Phil Knight's sitting next to his son's right there just like just watching like it watching. and everyone, not one person didn't wow. have their phone out. Like it's, you know, I don't know, I just thought of that, but being present too, you know, it's something I struggle with and I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, in general, it's like nowadays there's so many distractions, TikTok and Instagram, Twitter, 100,000 different things. Plus when you're trying to, you know, set up the next guest or organize things or be social, it's kind of hard. It's like, I, I just like, I think about this a lot in the current day and age with, with being present and social. Yeah. And I just feel like it's, it's kind of weird, like thinking 30, 40, 50 years ago when they're before cell phones, like how people got business done. It's like amazing. Imagine trying to like coordinate or have like do stuff, you know what I mean? Sending so like, faxes. Yeah. Yeah. Or having to go fly and meet someone in person to like close a deal or do something. So it's, I don't know. Anyway, there's a random thought, but you should check that out. I know it's, it's in the backyard here in LA. I just thought that, and they're making that movie like with Phil Knight about Jordan, like signing Michael Jordan. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, uh, hell yeah. No, yeah, it's, I haven't it, seen so, that. But anyway, I, just, I was just thinking, I, just, I was like, this guy is an absolute legend. Like that is the cool, like, to, it's yeah. just so cool to but be able to do that. I also think, you know, there's something about human connection that will never go away. Like we, you know, we had a good meeting today at the office where it's like, you just want to get in the same room so you can actually like feel someone out, get to know someone, yeah. read the energy, read the room, hear it from them and not like an email. And, you know, I hate to keep bringing up like the podcast too, but it's like kind of like the pod. It's like yeah. uninterrupted sit down, no phones, and you just dive in and get over, like, really hear someone out. Yeah. But yeah, I think, like, there there will always be that value in meeting face-to-face, -face, at least in the beginning. Of course. Or, like, no, of course. That, but, like, it's kind of slowly fading away. It's, it, it's weird, like, doing business now because, I mean, news is, like, Twitter. Like, Twitter, they report tweets as news now, right. which will I'll never get used to. Mm -hmm. I'm, like... 
guys, everyone's freaking out over this social media post. Really? Like, yeah. come on. No, it's, it, it, it is. It's just, it's gotten, it's, it's just, I, I don't know. I have a lot of feeling about it. Cause like, I personally, you know, I, I feel very, that I'm like too much connected. Like in a way I want it. Cause even now with this, like my, with my three and a half year old, you know, it's like, that's, that's the, that thing, the key is to like have, give yourself space to just put down, you know, like literally like block off for an hour or two. Cause you know, I find myself certain times too, I'll like be working. I'm like with him or something and I'm, I'm kind of on my phone still. And you know, it's also, it's not good. That's how then they see it. Yep. They feel yep. that. And like, they're like, Oh, then they want to watch TV all the time on the phone. Are they, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I'm like, I just, I just like really come up a lot recently about being present and it's, um, it's, it's tricky. I don't know. I just feel like we're in a, in yeah. a time where it's almost impossible to just not, because if you're motivated and if you're trying to do, you know, it's one thing to be looking at Twitter or Instagram, but if you're like constantly working or, you know, trying to do your best and, and do some other things, it's, it's just like a hard, like, I have a hard time with this too, to, to try to like balance yeah. it between like be the best, do the best for my stuff personally, but also be the best, you know, parent or, or friend or, or, or son yeah. or daughter to it. So it's tricky. I really agree with that though. Cause like with my little brother, when he was younger, I mean, you just, you have to control screen time. Mm -hmm. You just have to, they're yeah. going to be technologically advanced very quickly. Like right. that generation, there's no stopping it. And yeah. he can like operate my iPad almost better than I can. Right. And like, they will be tech savvy, which is good. So like, we don't have to worry about that. But if anything, we got to, like you said, like take it away and let him chill for a little bit. But yeah. You, it, there are advantages too to like being super tech savvy, right? But do, but do you feel personally like do you guys as both of you do you feel like that you are you able just to kind of disconnect or do you feel like because you know the nature of the business you're in and just in general that being connected and there's always something kind of going on or you want the next guest or then you know like the, to yeah. kind of like do your best so it's like I just find it like a hard it's like a it's, it's a tricky thing first? yeah for me it's a mixture because I have been doing social media pretty heavy for like. 10 years, yeah. you know, and it opened up every door in my life, yep. which, which to attest to where I'm at now. And I'm very grateful for that. But yeah. at the same time, it's like I knew the time and the energy and everything it takes to have that be a success. You know, you have to become obsessed to a degree. Yeah, exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I did that for so long that I became, it kind of like weighed on me to the point where I'm like, I, I had no drive, no desire to do it anymore. Right. And then I started looking at my habits. I started looking at the way I am. And, and even more recently, I found um, in the past couple of months, I would wake up and then I would get on my phone instantly because it'd be yeah. right there. It's my alarm, whatever. So what I've done in the past month, uh, because I caught myself, you know, after doing this and I'm like, because I don't, ha I get up whenever I want, you know what yeah. I mean? Which is a luxury unless I'm on set doing something, yep. but I love to get up early and go to the gym. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how I'm, that's how I like to start my day. So what I do now is I put it on the other side of the room and I can tell you uh, firsthand, one, it makes me get out of bed instantly, go turn off the alarm because I don't want to listen to that thing over mm -hmm. and over, right? And then what I've noticed is my energy has gone through the roof, my productivity in the mornings, uh, my productivity has gone through the roof. I'm not sitting there laying, scrolling and all of a sudden I watch 50, you know, right. reels or Instagram yeah, or TikToks or whatever it is, it's right? 1 p.m. and you're like, oh. I'm and I'm yeah, 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 exactly. And I've done that before. But so what, you, you hit the alarm and then you just don't use your phone, you're saying? or, or I, I'll or, either not use it or I'll immediately just throw on my gym clothes and get ready to go to the gym or I'll do a couple of emails in the morning, kind of however the, the morning needs to but go. But when you go to the gym, do you have your phone with you or even on or do you not? Do you have like a rule where you're not looking at it throughout? Because that, that also, I yeah. find myself in the gym and I'll like just, you know, end up takes like way longer and I don't really do much, but. The only thing I do in the, in the unless there's an immediate like, uh, you know, call or a right. meeting coming up or, you know, we need to communicate about something. Yeah. Um, unless it's that, I literally only use it for, for and I, I have these magnets on the back of it. So it literally just, I stick it onto a, a machine and I just hit, I just play different music. That's right. the only reason I use it. Very cool. Um, and so that is a form of my meditation to a degree too, but exactly what you're saying you need to find moments to unplug yeah. or it affects you. Like it affects me more than I, than I can relate or explain. And I love camping. I love, you know, making myself be present in some things, but it's not the same as like just being yeah. present, you know, yeah, yeah, for like sure. I'll ride my motorcycle. I'll have to be present. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll go camping. You have no service, you know, you have to be present, yeah. but finding those moments in your day to day to just fully disconnect priceless. Yeah. I, I, I would say that is, um, that, that it's just, it's just, uh, it's such that, that 10 day meditation thing was, that was 20, I did it in 2016, but that yeah. was like the wildest thing ever. Like, I, I don't know if I could do it again. And yeah. if I even, I'd recommend it, but it's like now, even now it's so much crazier the world. Like I, 10 days, like right now, 
you know, especially, I just don't know if I could do it, but it was like a spiritual out of body, like yeah. legitimately was the wildest thing I ever did in my life by far. It sounds really intense. Like, I don't know if I could do 10 days right now, completely unplugged, <laughs> yeah. but I'm like, I'm kind of a Maybe mix a three day, three yeah, day yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah. I, I could yeah. definitely do that for sure. Yeah. But like, I'm more of like, I'll answer an email at 5 a.m. or 2 a.m., like depending on what I'm doing. Like I, I just... I find like little pockets of time to unwind and to unplug. Yep. But like, I'm always technically working. Yep. Like even last night when I had like a headache, I came out and did 30 minutes of work from 1030 to 11. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm very just like, I'm consistently inconsistent with like timing Yeah. because I'm technically always working and always on the clock. So like, I'll take a little 30 minute, like, okay, I'm going to watch an episode of a show at 5 p.m. from 5 to 5.30. And then after that, I'm going to make food and answer more stuff or write yeah. another issue or whatever it is. Um, so I don't really have like one specific way of dealing with it. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, I'm always some form of on with like little pockets of. Right. But like the golf course is a great example. Like I try to not answer anything on the golf course. Yeah. I'll, I'll look at my phone at like a comfort station to be like, okay, is anyone really trying to get a hold of me? Right. And then if it's an emergency, I'll answer it. But like, I try yeah. to really unplug for like those three to four hours. Well, that, that's also what I was saying. Like my, you know, my dad working like Ford Motor Company nine to five in Michigan and looking at that way of, cause it's in a way it's almost like, and then he's done, right? It's like, all right, it's a long day, but then yeah. it's like you're off or whatever. So it's like, yeah, same way. I just never off. Right. It's like, yeah. it's also free, but never really like completely turned off. Like that's how I, that from literally from second I wake up till I'm going to bed, yeah. it's never like, I'm not just ever like, oh yeah, I'm done for the night right. at nine o'clock and like whatever. So exactly. I don't know. That's, yeah. that's like, again, it's a blessing and a curse, I guess. Just kind of the way you can try to find ways to be present and, yeah. and block yourself off. I think that's the key. Yeah. I think especially in each one of our industries, you know, that the, you know, there is the ability to always keep working and to keep have, having something more. And yeah. that's like, when you say 10 days, it's like, I could miss a lot of stuff in 10 days or what am I going to miss in 10 right. days? You know, especially like I can relate to that wholeheartedly because uh, you know, I've gotten calls the day before you're on set the next day. Right. And I'm like, well, what if my phone's off and do I just miss the biggest role of my life? Right. You know, no, I don't, yeah, so I don't yeah, know. How could it be? It'd be almost like torture to be inside <laughs> of a thing and yeah. like having to constantly think like yeah. that. So yeah, that's a, that's a bit of the problem. Yeah. I say this about Buddhists. That's what I was thinking before. Like, I remember thinking a long time ago, or seeing some stuff. I'm like, man, these guys like so crazy. Like how could they go through life and just like have no, like, you know what I mean? Like just be there and detached. Deep. But then I like, so, like there's been times where I've got, it's been so crazy, busy or great wild. I'm like, man, these guys might, they might be onto something. Yeah, like yeah. they might actually have hacked, you know what I mean? The code, like yeah. they, they don't think about what they're going to wear. They don't think about the car they're going to get, the how, the rent, the place they're yeah. going to go, the date, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. Obviously there's, those are two like very extremes. I'm yeah. not saying that's how it's to be, but it's just interesting yeah. like to think that, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And, and maybe some, you know, things are, can yeah. be, can be different and, and be good. And there's tons of knowledge you can take from that. Like, this is why we have our little Buddha right here, right? And like our little crystals of negative energy removers. <laughs> but like, it's about taking those practices and applying them to your own life, right? That's how I look at it. Like, yeah. they're in a position to do that. And I'm sure they experience like pure bliss and moments of just pure presence and awareness. But okay, when can I do that? Yeah. If I'm in traffic and need to take a deep breath, like boom, meditation or like whatever it is. But yeah. Um, hell yeah, it's about applying it to your own life. For sure. That's the, yeah, actually it's funny you mentioned that 10 day retreat because my buddy, uh, I didn't hear back him for a couple of days mm -hmm. uh, and he gets, he messaged me back on, on the seventh day that he was gone. And he's like, man, I just got back from this retreat where it was no phones, no nothing for seven days. And he's like, it feels so weird, one, being on a phone, but two, this is one of the best things I think I've ever done in my entire life for myself. Yeah. So I would love to do something like that um, and love to hear more about the one that you chose to do as well. But yeah. uh, yes, I think it's just, you know, committing to it and finding the time. For sure. Yeah, it was, it's called Vipassana is the one I did. Vipassana. So I think Vipassana was, um, yeah, very cool. Recommend it, but maybe a yeah, three-day or five-day 
I don't know, 10 days is, it does seem a bit unreasonable nah, but right now. If it'll yeah. fly by too. That's a thing. Like yeah. if you just commit to something and do it, I'm sure it's super helpful. Have you guys been to Burning Man? I forget. You have not. I, right? I haven't. Have haven't yeah. Oh yeah. man. You guys, you got, you got to do a podcast from Burning Man. I would, I would, awesome. I would totally do it. I was a Coachella guy and then a stage coach guy after meeting Brock, of course. And then, um, and once we like Troubadour and, and Nashville guys came out and started hanging at Madison during yeah. it. So like all that. Um, but <laughs> No, yeah, I, Burning Man still yeah. hasn't been on there. That's the, Be, besides meeting your wife there, have you gone consistently, or was that the last time? Or was we, the, we met in 2014, went back 15, 16, yeah. took off a few years, then COVID, so it wasn't like two, one year no, and then the second right. was kind of whatever, and then we just went this year for the first time since you know for like a long time then since we hadn't gone since 16, but it was great. I, I recommend it. You know, it's uh, it's 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 harder like with kids and like it's hard to disconnect a bit when you. You know, I would recommend going sooner than later. I would just say, I think it's like yeah. a must do for every, like really, cause I, I'm, I'm more bougie myself. I like the thousand Egyptian, you know, thread count. I want to be in a hotel. And be, I don't, that's not really my like outdoor dust. It's not my like thing, but I, I got past it. And then once I went in there, I just like loved it. And it was, it was great. I just, yeah, would recommend it. Just um, got to say, yeah, sooner the better. You know, the more responsibilities, mm -hmm. the more on your mind, it's just kind of harder. Cause same thing, you gotta disconnect, no real cell phones. Or, or connect like it's just kind of your you need to be able to let go for like a for the period of time you're there i would just consider it like camping right yeah like you just yeah, go camp for a weekend yeah it's of. pretty much like that yes exactly so yeah just just for some reason i couldn't remember if you had yeah. i knew you i knew you uh -huh. had not been but no i mean i'm i'm definitely down what, you know what would you say the main draws for you are with going to burning man uh at the, just the the art is really cool just the creativity just seeing that people are really mm. you know relaxed and, and not not on their phones, you really, because you're well, not, you know, so it's just kind of like yeah. cool to watch everyone just kind of hang out and, and sort of make a self-reliable place where they're in the middle of nowhere, there's, you know, an airport's made, there's, wow. there's like, it's like a city built out of nothing. It's like all the principles, radical, um, reliant, self, and, you know, there's, there's like 10 principles, which I won't go, uh, radical self-reliance, like just being able to, to go there and like come into like a, basically a city out of nowhere in the middle of the desert and, and make everything work. And it's a giving a lot of, a lot of gifting, a lot of giving. There's no buying, there's no money. There's not one thing you can buy there. Wow. So, so you yeah, bring cool. stuff to trade, right? Yeah. Like yeah you know, it's, it, it, they say tra like bartering, trading, but it's not like you go to a camp and it's like, oh, you guys do coffee. I'll give you a, a steak. We do yeah. steak. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like, just, it's more like you just go and then you're giving stuff at your camp or whatever. And then, you know, you go to other camps and they give. It's not that like a, sense. it's not like a, you know, trade, eye for yeah. an eye. It's more just like everyone's kind of giving and you, you do your own sort of specific niche thing. So love it. Next time I go, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to plan it. It was, uh, it, it's a lot of fun, man. It really is. We'll have to, we'll have to do that in the future. So I'm in, yeah. I'm down. I'll, I'll follow up on that. I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll make sure it's one of those things that's are cool, but it does take a lot of, like, it's not just something you decide like two days before you got to get into a camp and figure it out. So yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk that's about awesome. it. Yeah. 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 Oh, they'll check it out. Well, hell yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming, Jeff. This was like long overdue. And, um, I honestly am looking forward to like tons more episodes that we do together at different points in our life and, and all that, and making this more of like a regular thing, um, for everybody out there, it's the Jeff Gross podcast and then the poker flow show. Yep. Jeff Gross poker on all socials for, uh, yeah, Twitch. Uh, YouTube, I have as well as Instagram, Twitter, all that. You can use search Jeff Gross Poker and it'll kind of all come up. But the Jeff Gross podcast, that is a, that's that's the podcast one. Similar to what you guys are doing. I need a, a co I like the co host. I like the the double. Uh, <laughs> that That's nice. So, you know, maybe so, one, one yeah, day we'll no, make a triple like, in the future. We'll just make, you know, yeah. blow it up, man. It's, it's, it, it's man. fun to have. It's fun to have multiple people. I really do. I enjoyed it. I have never, I've been on a few, sh like talking with, different stuff and i've never done with two hosts and it's uh yeah. it's very cool i like the like the energy and you guys like again i said at the beginning big big congrats it is uh it's so hard to start so many people i know that they say oh we're gonna i, I want to do this or what's the equipment how do you do this that and the other and then you know they do one or they never start so like you know i see you guys are fully into it you're you're really yeah. going for it and, and and it's 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 really cool to see and, and glad uh glad it's working out it seems like it's it's going really well so yeah i appreciate you guys having me it's always a pleasure man yeah, yeah. Cheers. Thank you for watching Studio 22. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And follow our socials at Studio 22 Podcast.